Greetings fanboys and fangirls, Jared here with another review from Fanboys Forever, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Amazon exclusive Wolverine from Marvel Legends' new film line from the Fox X-Men film series. So this has been a long time coming, as longtime fans of Marvel Legends know, and I'm very excited to take a look at this Wolverine and how it compares to the very long legacy of Wolverines from Hasbro, Toy Biz, and even Diamond Select. So let's begin the battle of the Wolverines. First off, we'll have a look at Wolverine's sculpt. We'll go from top to bottom. The head sculpt is especially impressive. Uh, I am very impressed by what they were able to do in terms of the Hugh Jackman likeness. At first, I remember when they were showing the promotional images, I wasn't really 100% sold on the likeness. I wasn't exactly sure if they had nailed it and uh, I really didn't think that it would turn out as good as it did. But I have to say, I really think that they really nailed it. I'm not sure if this is some kind of a digital scan, perhaps. I guess that is a great compliment. If it is not, because I am sort of wondering if that's what it was, because this really does look that convincing. Everything is right. You have all the lines in the face, the nose is right on, which is always um, of key importance with the Hugh Jackman head sculpt. Uh, the lips are right on, they have the stubble in, the paint is very nice. You can actually see individual little specks of stubble painted, have a little slop on the nose right there. Um, but as you know, Hugh Jackman does uh, frequently have to have uh, some growths removed on his nose, so it's almost a little bit of uh, actor accuracy there. So I hope Hugh's doing well with that now. The hair sculpt is especially impressive. You can see that there's every strand as detailed as it can be. And even the cutoff to the hair, you can see that the hair is actually a separate kind of piece. And it's not just a smooth cutoff. You can actually see the strands go down. Bottom of the chin here, you can see where the mutton chops kind of continue. And I just think really this looks great. And not to mention all the great detail work on the body. Uh, we'll get into that. The necklace is pretty good with the dog tags. It is really hard to do dog tags at the six inch scale, the 112 scale. Uh, and I think this is probably about as good as it could be done with the mass market kind of a 12th scale figure like this. And so I really don't mind it. It's, is it as accurate as it could be size wise? Not necessarily. And as soon as you start messing around, it kind of looks weird. But if you keep it posed the way it's meant to, it's pretty flush against the body. And I think it looks pretty nice. Moving on to the chest sculpt. We can see he kind of is wearing the white wife beater shirt. Uh, I really like this because they've even sculpted in the little lines. And you can actually see that there's a little bit of like tan paint going through it. Because in a lot of the movies, there was almost like a tan look that was going through. Almost as if it were sort of stained looking. Uh, so I really like that. I think that that actually works out really well for this. And we have the arms that are kind of your basic... Marvel Legends sort of muscle arms, although I do think this may very well be a new sculpt, especially because there are no pins anywhere on the arms, which is really nice. We know that the Marvel Legends guys have been talking about pinless articulation for some time, so it's kind of an exciting thing. Uh, on the back, we can see that all that great detail work continues. We have a little stray spot right there, but it's nothing that Marvel Legends fans uh, won't already be familiar with. And moving on down, we have our blue jeans, and our belt buckle. Now, the belt buckle, this is something they probably could have done a little bit better with because we know that in the movies, the uh, Indian belt buckle actually has the face painted. So it's uh, you could easily go in there with a little bit of uh, brown paint, a little bit of red, and probably correct that. But even on the original uh, 2000 Toy Biz figures from the first X-Men film, that was actually painted. So I definitely think they could have painted that, but you know, I, I'm still so pleased with the uh, other details overall that I'm not too worried. Uh, the jeans maybe are a little strange with the paint application because they have close up, it, it does look a little weird with the way that they've done kind of the acid wash over the front. Far away, it looks terrific. But when you start like really getting in there and kind of macro shots, it looks a little strange because it's such a, almost a harsh cutoff to where you kind of have this darker blue and then this really lighter blue right here. But I think overall, I it does convey jeans uh, about as well as they could have probably at this scale. The sculpt even has that jean texture on it. We don't mean jean <laughs> texture, but uh, moving on to the back, 
We do have a little bit of copyright info there. The belt continues in the back and the loops. And on down, we have Wolverine's uh, boots here. Nothing really to write home about here. Nothing out of the ordinary and nothing really spectacular about the bottoms. So we also cannot forget Wolverine's claws. They look really good here. And I was actually really surprised by how straight they were. I think that a lot of care was taken in the way that the figure was packaged to make sure that these wouldn't get warped. So I think that that really worked out well for them. Moving on, we will talk just a little bit about articulation. Uh, Wolverine only has a ball joint at the neck, but they give it a lot of room. So you can see that you can swivel it around and do all sorts of great stuff in terms of cocking the head. He can look up about that far. He can look down about that far. But if there had been a hinge at the neck, it could have been so much more dramatic. So that's a shame, but I think it is plenty good enough, especially to get the poses where he's attacking, kind of lunging forward. And then if he's looking down, I mean, his chin almost buries all the way down. So it, there's really not much more it could have done, but with a hinge, it could have been a little bit better. We do have a butterfly joint right here, and it's a very effective one too. You can see there's quite a bit of range there. And I think it looks great because it blends very well with the sculpt. So it doesn't just look, you know, completely out of place. So that combined with the pinless uh, look right here really helps. There's a shoulder hinge. You can go up about that far. There is a full rotation where the arm can go around. Now, once you get it up to here, it has to kind of go out this way because of the shoulder pieces. So you can bring it back down. There's a full rotation under the shoulder. There is a great double joint there at the elbow. And we, of course, do have a swivel right here at the wrist. And there's a hinge so you can get all of Wolverine's craziest poses when he's got his claws brandishing them. We also get a hinge here. And it's an ab crunch that goes really well. He can go really far back, really far forward. And the best part is none of them actually make the sculpt look weird. Uh, it stays really flush no matter what you do. So it really does look nice either way. It really doesn't look too odd at all. Sometimes with the ab crunch on some of these figures, it can look a little weird when you start to really use them to their full potential. Also, there is a cut, just a rotation here. There's, of course, uh, the hips down here. He can get a pretty good kick, really, even without drop-down hips because they've still not incorporated that into this line, unlike the G.I. Joe Classified series. We can get splits that are really pretty good. I don't think Wolverine can do the splits any more than that. We do have full rotation with a cut right here on the upper thigh. We do have a great double jointed knee. It looks a little weird when you have it like this and you have the one acid wash uh, part right there and the other parts are dark blue, but it's still, it's, it works very well. And then down here at the ankles, of course, we have the great Marvel Legends ankle pivot. He can go down about that much and far eh, a little bit that way but it has a full rotation along with that pivot. So overall, Wolverine can strike all kinds of great poses. He can stand no problem and basically anything you can throw at him. If I just kind of work with him here, let's see what we can do. Will he stand? Yeah, doesn't take much working with him at all. And he stands very well. All right, beyond articulation, let's look at what Wolverine actually includes. So we can actually remove his dog tags. It's like an X2, right? When he throws them at Striker. Anyway, though, you can just get this look where he doesn't have them. And of course, Wolverine looks like this plenty of the time in the movies. You can actually remove this head and we can get more of a feral. Now, when I saw this head, I was actually very unconvinced with the original pictures that this head would be worth it at all. But you know what? Now that I have the figure in hand, this head is actually pretty decent. It looks a little crazy. Uh, for my taste. Uh, maybe the hair is just a little exaggerated. Maybe the eyes are a little uh, kind of out there. But honestly, I mean, it definitely looks like Hugh Jackman Wolverine. It's kind of an extreme face. I think if I could change one thing about it, honestly, I think that maybe the brow juts out a little too much. So it's, it's a little too extreme where the brow area just kind of uh, hooks forward a little bit. And the bangs that are coming down from the hair look a little thick to me. I almost think if they could have been cut down just slightly, it probably would have helped it out. Uh, so this head is pretty extreme, but I still like it and I think it looks nice. Bone claw hands. So if you want to get his look, that's more of the uh, Wolverine origins when he has the bone claws, or even in some of the later X-Men movies uh, when he's uh, in the Wolverine when he gets the bone claws for a while. So they look really good. 
So I think that's also a great look for the figure. It's also worth noting that if you want to on the bone claws, you can actually remove the bone claws. So they just come out like this, just a little peg system. But he is left with these really weird gaps <laughs> on his hands. So that's something to be aware of. So the packaging doesn't necessarily identify what version of Wolverine this is from the movies. We know Hugh Jackman had many, many appearances as Wolverine, so it can be a little daunting. Now, I do think that even without identifying which movie he's from, that this is a great generalized look for Wolverine. But I've done quite a bit of research going back and forth through the different movies and comparing pictures, and I think I've sort of pegged what this is supposed to be representing. And I think it could actually represent a few different things if you want it to. One thing it could represent is basically any of the promotional stills from X-Men Origins Wolverine. And when I say promotional stills, I mean because they styled Hugh Jackman's hair in this way. And uh, they did gave him kind of the classic Wolverine haircut in all those promotional stills. And he was all ripped in those and he wore this outfit quite a bit. And so I really do think this is most representative of that. Something else that the head sculpt definitely represents is anytime Wolverine is in the past and days of future past, I think the haircut is exactly pretty much this in that movie. The other thing, if you really kind of wanted to stretch it about what it could represent, is the mansion invasion scene in X2. I think that this would probably get away with that. I know that he wasn't quite this jacked at that time, but uh, he was, uh, I think this is pretty similar to his look in that invasion scene. Uh, he also, if you use this head, could sort of get away with it looking like the forest scene in X-Men The Last Stand, the third X-Men film. I think this head with the hair uh, being a little more, I don't know, the hair seems a little more fluffy here. So I think that it, you could get away with him being in the forest fight from The Last Stand. So those are just a few of my ideas on what this could represent, but there's just a lot of different options. And I do think they've done a good job making this kind of the quintessential version of Wolverine, but you do have to realize that there's some things you won't get away with. You won't get away with saying that he's from uh, a lot of the actual on-screen scenes in X-Men Origins Wolverine because the hair isn't right. It's more swooped back like the image on the packaging is back there. Um, you won't get away with saying that he's from the original movie because Hugh Jackman uh, definitely looks a lot older here with the way they've done the face sculpt. And you can't necessarily say he's from the Wolverine because in the Wolverine he has more of the crew cut look with the points on the ends. So uh, you are kind of narrowed to those options I was talking about earlier if you're going for pure screen accuracy. Let's do a few comparisons with this Wolverine. And this is where our Wolverine fight begins. So round one, we're gonna go in chronological order. And I believe that the furthest one back that I have here, I have some of the older ones, but still, we're just gonna go with kind of the best representations that I could. So the first comparison we'll be doing is kind of a cheat because this really isn't necessarily a Wolverine that actually got released. This is the body of the series one X2 Wolverine that Toy Biz did back in the day, but it has the head of a later series Wolverine that they did that had a much better head sculpt but had some ridiculous action features that were just awful. So I took that head and popped it on this body so that I, uh, for all these years I could have something that was more appropriate. And uh, really, I think they did a great job back then. I think that for them not to have the resources they do now with digital sculpting, I still think this is pretty recognizable as Hugh Jackman. But if we look at the heads, it's not fair to compare this figure because this is so many years later. This is dec almost two decades later. But I still think this one's okay, but this blows it out of the water. So round one goes to the Redux Wolverine. Next up, we will move through the ages. And this was right around the same time as the other one. His claws are horribly warped. You can't hardly get these things to stay. Once you heat them up, it seems like they always go back to that plastic memory of their kind of crazy warped nature. This is uh, my favorite Wolverine figure for many, many years, and the sculpt is in some ways still unbeaten, I think, by a lot of the uh, releases Hasbro has done, especially for the brown suit Wolverine. And it's just fun to see these two guys together. Of course, this is pretty representative of how Hugh Jackman would actually look if he were standing alongside of comic book Wolverine, since Hugh Jackman is much taller than comic book Wolverine ought to be. 
And it may be unfair because he's so different, but I'll give that round to him as well. Moving on. This one's an interesting one because it is the Wolverine figure. The Wolverine. Yes, the movie called The Wolverine. The sequel to X-Men Origins. And it is the figure that Diamond Select did. And this figure is still pretty rare uh, these days. It was kind of a sleeper hit. I think a lot of people just kind of let it get away from them. But this is in the 7-inch scale, so... I do think that this is the kind of strongest comparison that we have for this figure. So I do want to have a very close look at these head sculpts and see kind of the thinking behind each company. I know that this guy included multiple head sculpts, but this is the basic head that he includes. So I feel like that it's most appropriate to compare these two alongside each other. There are definitely some things going, going for each one of them. Uh, this is very representative of Wolverine's kind of crew cut that he has in The Wolverine, and I think that it works very well for that. This is more representative of the Origins kind of Wolverine and the Days of Future Past Wolverine. But I think looking at these two head sculpts, even though this was terrific for the time it released in, and it's still a great figure with plenty of articulation, and I don't plan on ever getting rid of it, I still think this guy takes the cake. Because if you look, this is a great almost caricature or almost animated looking version of Hugh Jackman as Wolverine. But this is so realistic looking with the kind of uh, paint printing digital process that Hasbro has now. If you can find one that's actually applied correctly. I do think that this guy brings home the Canadian bacon as it were. And finally, just for fun. We will put him alongside the latest release of comic book Wolverine in, uh, from Hasbro Marvel Legends. And I think it's really fun to see these guys side by side. Once again, it is an accurate comparison of what Hugh Jackman would actually look like standing beside of comic book Wolverine. I will tell you something really cool that you can do. Yes, it is possible. If we give this a pop and we give this a pop, you can actually take the Hugh Jackman head and it fits very comfortably, pegs right in, right onto the body. Now, it is funny because it's a little big for that body, but it's really not too big, honestly. It's hardly any bigger than the other Logan heads that we've gotten on similar bodies to this one. And it is very funny. Now you can finally see Hugh Jackman in the yellow spandex costume. You can also use the other head, which for some reason has quite a bit of a tighter fit on it. So I don't really know what that's about, but much tighter fit, but this looks even more comic book accurate, but it is very funny to have this be an option, but it is very neat in a way. I don't know. I kind of like it. And although I'm not actually sure that it's true to any of the appearances in the films, we do have this Cyclops figure that Hasbro did for right around X-Men Origins Wolverine. It was the Walmart exclusive two pack, and it was the only way to get a modern James Marsden six inch cyclops and i really hope hasbro will give us a new one because this guy it's quite funny to look at him now uh because he is pretty outdated the head sculpt's really not too bad honestly but the body it's so funny to think that they just did the plain slim muscle body and just painted the x-men costume over it that kind of thing just would never fly today but it was so cool to get him back then it's really neat to see these guys side by side. The scale is pretty accurate too because Hugh Jackman was quite a bit taller than Cyclops and James Marsden. Uh, it is funny though, in the scenes that they appeared together in, they would actually have Marsden wear lifts in his boots to make sure they were at least eye to eye. So this is probably much more accurate for how the two men would have looked in real life. So still pretty cool to see them together. It's so great to see all these different representations of the same character all together. And it's great to get something that I would finally start to call as nearing a definitive take on movie Wolverine in the six inch scale. I absolutely love what Hasbro was able to do with this figure. I think they've got a very strong likeness here for Hugh Jackman. I think that he not only looks terrific, but he plays terrific. The posing possibilities for this guy are really endless. I think it's awesome that we, all these years later, have actually gotten a modern take on a film that i honestly thought we were done ever getting any merchandise for thankfully that disney merger with fox happened and now the marvel legends team has access to go back and really do justice to so many of these characters 
So what can they do next? Well, we already know that there's a first series of X-Men movie toys coming out with Mystique, another Wolverine that appears to be more based on uh, his coat look and origins or the first movie, depending on uh, how you look at it. But hopefully we'll determine that when we get it. Um, there's so many possibilities for where they could go from here. There's the two pack with Professor Xavier with the alternate heads and Magneto. And so I'm, I'm excited. What would I want if they could do one item from the Fox X-Men universe? I would really love a Wolverine figures from the Wolverine. I really would because I really like the kind of shorter haired look. Uh, it would be awesome if we could get kind of a reuse of this body but they could give him a soft goods furry coat to where he would be looking like the uh, snow fight that he has in the Japanese village. That would be absolutely incredible. I'd love to see him in the black kind of funeral attire where he fights the Yakuza. That would be awesome. Um, I'd love to see the days of future past, future Wolverine. I mean, basically all you would have to do is repaint this head with some gray in the temples, change the hair a little bit and put him in that new body. So that would be spectacular. I asked Brandon for this video what he would like to see. He said that if he had his druthers, he would love to see Cyclops in his costume at, that he wore at the end of X-Men Apocalypse. And he would love to see a whole wave of characters in those costumes, even though they didn't see much action. The build a figure could be the Oscar Isaacs Apocalypse. And I agree, that would be spectacular. Anyway, guys, that does it for me. We surely do appreciate you watching our channel. Remember, we're trying to build our way up to 1,000 subscribers, so if you could help us get there, that's really all we ask, and we appreciate each and every new sub we get. So thank you so much for watching, and guys, be safe out there, God bless, and I'll see you on Fanboys Forever. Take care.